Hey, I'm Rick from SuPy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make wireframing a lot easier with two relatively new Figma tools. So I've just quickly made a pen and paper wireframe, looks something like this, a simple portfolio website. And of course, when I move this design over to Figma, I want to be able to chop and change the layout really quickly without making too much of a mess. So I'm gonna talk about two parts of Figma that help me prototype. So the first one is Figma components. These will be the building blocks of my design work. So for instance, on this, it would be an individual logo or a single portfolio item. And the second part is Figma's auto layout tool. This will quickly lay out layers and it will space things out automatically, hence auto layout. And together, they're both powerful tools that help speed up my wireframing process. And I thought it might help you too. So I've just quickly gone into Figma and I've set up a frame, kind of the desktop version of this, also with a layout grid in here as well. So 12 columns, 80 pixels and 24 pixel gap between them. So how would we go about designing our layout? So the usual way of doing things would be we would add a rectangle, for instance, that kind of goes over maybe three columns, something that looks a little bit like that. And then we start copying and pasting things and then say that goes next to it, that goes next to it there. Oh, and now we need to add some text. So this one is project number one, and this one is project number two. And obviously we'd lay things out as and when. So what we wanna do instead is think about things as elements, as kind of like components that we should call them. So what I'm gonna start with is actually just these first two. So here what I have is a rectangle with some text underneath. Now what I can use is a Figma plugin to actually style this up. I'm just gonna use the Unsplash plugin and just quickly insert a random image just so we have something there. Now what I can do is select these two layers. So I've got my rectangle one, which I'm just gonna rename image and my text, which I'm just gonna rename title. And I'm gonna select them both. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a, comp a component. And what this will do is it'll let me almost like have a layer that I can change. So in here, what I can say is, well, this component, let's rename that something like project item, let's call it. What happens if I copy and paste this is I get another version of this. Now the content within these things will be able to change. So for instance, if I open this new one and say this title is now project two, that's totally fine. And also with the same thing with the image, again, I can go to unsplash uh, my plugin and then insert a random one. Now, of course the layout isn't correct yet, but what I can do is because this is now componentized is I can change some of this layout on the main component. So the main component is one with these four things in here. This one's just a single one. So this is the original one. I can actually start to lay this out. So for instance, this title, I can move over to the left into the right position. Notice how both of them move at the same time. Same thing with the image. If I resize this, so maybe I want to make it exactly square, then that also resizes too. So I can start to lay things out correctly using components. Maybe I've forgotten something in here. So all I need to do is add one thing. If I click text, and I add it in here, I can add it into my component and this text, where's it gone? It's gonna say something like design. So notice, even though I just added one, it's in both. Now, of course, with this, I can actually lay this out again, I can put this into the correct position, maybe around there. I can also change the typography too. So maybe design goes there into regular, maybe a little bit too small, but you can see how by just adding one change, it reflects in both places. Now with this, of course, what I might want to do is then say, cool, this works well. I need project one and project two and project three. I'm gonna take this and copy and paste it. So I have another one I can move over here and then say, this one is project number three. So in here, I've got my image. Maybe again, I'm gonna do unsplash on this just so we have a different image. Oh, done the wrong one. Let's move them back around in the correct order. There we go. So now they should be in the correct order and both of them. It's a cool owl, isn't it? So there we go. We've got project one, two, and three. Again, I could just rename these things accordingly. Now, one thing that we can add in here, which is a really cool feature, is Figma's auto layout. Now, at the moment, of course, what I've said is title and design, for instance. Let's call that something like category. Um, what we can do is say, well, what happens if this gets large? What happens if project two has a really long title? So I'm just going to quickly say project two has a really long title. Now, what you might see 
coming up is this kind of doesn't work very well because at the moment within my component everything has a set place and when things break they break pretty badly so this isn't very good for making layouts or wireframing or even making design work now what i can use as part of figma is figma's auto layout tool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly select this main component now this main component has image title and category in here and if i click auto layout in here what i will get is now i have this vertical layout which i can change the vertical horizontal now if i just move this down so we can see what's going on this basically is saying image title and category are going in a horizontal direction across the top and there's no gap at the start and padding and there's 18 between each one if i make that bigger there's 24 between each one or 32 between each one or 324 for accident there so maybe say 32 for now now of course this is breaking the layout and we actually want to go down the page but there's a few things in here that we might want to fix. So for instance, we still have project two has a really long title if I move this back into place. What I can do is on my title is I can say, well, maybe I don't want this to keep going across getting bigger and bigger. On title, I can actually change the layout in the text. So for instance, this one here is auto width. It gets as long as possible. We don't care about auto width. We care about auto height. So I'm gonna click this. So you might see now that Project 2 has a really long title. It's going down the page. And the reason it's going down the page at this kind of width is this width is a certain width already. So this one is taking the same thing. But what I can do is click title again and actually pick these things from up here in the design and say, I want this to go to both edges, stretch left and right. If I click this now, it will go to these edges. So if project three has not only a really long title and even more information, I can say project three has a really long, long, long title. So notice how this layout is reflected now. It can change things really, really easily. So for instance, if I change the image and make this even taller, Notice how this layout reflects all these at the same time. So this is a really powerful tool. Now, one thing you might notice is, well, I don't want this gap and this gap to be the same. I can still use auto layout within a component. So for instance, if I pick title and category together, I can add auto layout to these. So basically I'm gonna right click, group the selection, and instead add auto layout to this group. So this group is now maybe something like the text that goes with this, or maybe a kind of a description, let's call it a description with the image. And here, what I can do is just quickly change this spacing. So maybe this one is 16. So notice how all of these are now 16 gap. We still have a 32 gap between each one, or is it 24, 32 on image and description, but within description itself, we have category and title. Now we can use auto layer on a bigger layer. So for instance, I maybe want to add a fourth component in here. Now rather than just copying and pasting and placing things out, which is kind of what I did earlier without auto layout, what I can do is say, well, let's pick all of these three things together. Let's make them a group. So group selection, and then add auto layout to this. So here we can see it's going in a horizontal way and zero, zero, 24. 24 is just assumed this is kind of what they were spaced out originally. Now, if I go and select these three things in here, what I want them to be aligned is not in the middle, but at the top. So if I click align top, they'll all go in here. I can align at the bottom or the middle or the top. But what I can start to do now is copy and paste things. So here I can say project one, I kind of want to put at the end, just going to copy and paste this in. So notice how automatically it went into the right place. I didn't have to move things around. This is the power of auto layout. It's a really, really powerful tool. Now, of course, what I can put in project number one is now project four. It's in here still. Project four, I can still have the same issue and still pick a different image using my plugins from Unsplash. Insert in there. So now we're building up a layout. Now this frame, this group that I have could be called something like a row, basically my portfolio row. And if I copy and paste this, I'm gonna take all that and paste it in, I can actually start to lay this out properly. 
Now you might notice that I'm moving things into the right position. Now if I'm moving things into the right position, I could think, well, this could be a job for auto layout. So again, I'm gonna select the two rows. I'm gonna group them together and I'm gonna add auto layout onto this group. And here I've got a vertical layout and there's currently 110 space in. But if I make this something like 80 now, I can actually go in here and say, this is my project list, for instance. I have two rows in here. I can copy and paste these in and I get this going down the page. It automatically positions things. Now, what the power of this means is if I change one of these original co components, everything should work automatically. So for instance, maybe I don't want there to be a square image in here. I can go and find my original project item component and I can start to play around with this. Now watch as I start to change just one thing in here. So if I change just one thing, all of the layout changes accordingly. So this is an incredibly powerful tool. I'm using components and auto layout to work out exactly where everything should be on the page. Now this makes wireframing incredibly easy, but also incredibly clean. Now look at my layers list. It isn't positioned in a certain way. I've got everything really, really neat and tidy and everything makes sense. So by combining Figma's components and auto layout together, we make this layout really, really easy to make in any kind of wireframe that we want.